if you don't know what Stormgate is, this is all of the ex-Blizzard employees that worked on Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2. They left. Obviously, Blizzard's a bit of a mess now. They formed a company called Frost Giant. Stormgate is the RTS. It's the game they're working on. I've got really high hopes for this game. I'm super excited. It's basically going to be in the spirit of a Blizzard RTS. And so this is the first uh, gameplay reveal they had. There have already been some videos up online. Uh, I wasn't able to watch this live because I'm in Korea, and then I had a wedding the next day. Uh, so this is us a few days late to the party. But finally here watching this. What I think of the name, I think it's catchy. I like it. So immediately here, looks to me like kind of like Bio versus Mech. Um, I, I get sort of Terran vibes from this. Right off the bat, I want to point out, I really like the colors. StarCraft 2 was uh, too, uh, I don't know, lots of dark blue and gray and purple. Um, I think if this is going to succeed uh, as a game, you want it to kind of stand out. You want it to be pretty easy on the eyes. Um, and so I like the colors quite a bit. Looks like they went with kind of the classic blue versus red, the same color scheme we use in, in GSL or um, DreamHacks or, or, or IEMs or anything like that. Also note, this looks, see there was a little bit of a startup uh, animation there, looks like a, kind of like a siege tank to me, but if you look at this little, basically just a red circle, it seems like the projectiles can be fired in, but they're not locking onto a specific unit. So this is interesting. Again, by the way, this is in the alpha version, so we don't, we don't know if these all these units are going to be here, if something's going to change, but this is kind of an interesting mechanic. I wonder if uh, the opponent can see that circle or if it's just you. We also, I think this is basically a medic, if I had to guess. And looking up here, it looks like a Blade Master. I, got, I mean, I, it, there's not heroes as far as I can tell in this trailer, but kind of like a Zealot or some kind of a melee unit here. Uh, at least for this race. So you've got gunners and you've got melee fighters. So kind of like the pairing of a Dragoon and a Zealot, I would say. Although, obviously, this seems to be more Marine than Dragoon. Uh, we've got... looks like dogs, actually. Kind of... this reminds me of sort of a, a, a classic Brood War Zergling... Uh, set of Zergling surrounding Marines. Interesting to see there are dogs in this. Last time I could think of dogs in an RTS was maybe like Command and Conquer or something like that. Uh, this is a three-minute trailer, so I'm going to have to pause a lot because I obviously have a lot of stuff to say. Looks like you can wall in with structures here. It does seem like just like a siege tank. I don't think this thing can fire right in front of itself. Dropship play. Hi, guys. This is TLO. Obviously played RTS my entire life, so it's been a real privilege for me to be one of the first people to try out Stormgate. I kind of like that this is almost like it's a campaign mission. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like where someone's talking to you. Take note again, the resource. Uh, I look at this and I see Warcraft 3 Goldmine. Really stoked about this match against Kevin. I think I'm going to do some light. Something's being built here. This appears, I'm looking at this, Worker 04. It looks like there's two resources so far. It doesn't look like you build on top of this resource. It looks like you build adjacent to it. So, I don't know, Vespian Gas, something like that uh, here. And this is probably a, a structure to collect that. If I had to guess here, like a depot or uh, an orc farm or human farm, whatever, maybe barracks, something like that. Caress in the early game and then just try to overwhelm them with a massive amount of macro. By the way, getting to see the UI... Obviously, this game is incomplete, um, and they're still building it up, but mini-map in the bottom left. Okay, so it, it does look like they're having um, a macro layout that's just going to be ergonomic and, and kind of comfortable. Um, supply 15 of 14. I'm assuming that's supply, unless they're mining bread. So it, you, you look like, it looks like you mine in fours, interestingly enough. If I was streaming this, like, look at this. Look how this lines up nicely. I could even have my camera right down here at the bottom left or the bottom right. That's kind of kind of nice. Scout. Oh. Dog, we're still, we got dog fights in this game. Workers move very quickly. I like the accumulation of resources. It seems to be pretty fast. 
It looks like the game picks up pretty quickly. Hi, my name is Kevin Monk Dong, and I work on gameplay and balance on Stormgate. Today, I'll be trying a fast expansion build, and then I'll try to tech to higher tier units to defend whatever TLO throws at me. Look at this. You can run through the TLO trees. That's interesting. I'm wondering if that's just for these trees, if it's a, it's a type of tree. So, I do think there were some pretty big uh, breakthroughs in StarCraft 2, like um, uh, the, the mist you could hide in. Um, there was a lot of neat stuff that they kind of improved on, but this looks like a really nice step up. Uh, is there another video where, where Day9's talking over it? There is. There, there was the actual trailer that they revealed where my brother's talking, and then Tim, who worked on Warcraft 3 at Blizzard, is talking. Um, but I'm watching just this one without uh, other people talking over it right now. What is this thing over here, I wonder? Interesting to note that there's some kind of a red dot. Maybe there's a sensor tower here? I can't really tell. But interesting that there's some kind of indicator before they came into the Fog of War. Now, they go through the... Um, they go through the, the trees, too. So I, I guess small stuff can fit through the trees. Maybe scout ability? I think you're probably right, actually. Obviously, when I look at this race that they're... Um, or faction, whatever they're going to call it uh, in the game, in my head, I think Terran, but this is a, a kind of a little bit of a Warcraft 3 slash Age of Empires moment. Look at this. It looks like... Can all these units make this, or are they all just right-clicked here? Yeah, so they are helping to build this. So that means that, um, just like Age of Empires, you can have all your workers make stuff all at once, at least for this faction. Monk is getting dominated here. All right, turret. All right, now we got the big boys. Seems like this is splash damage. Ah, uh, he did a lot of worker damage there, so I'm in a pretty bad economic... Monk, put your hand back on the mouse. You're still in the game, man. ...disadvantage. I'm going to have to try some really sneaky tactics, maybe getting an upgrade. Okay, so let's go back here. They can't go through the um, trees. Bad economic disadvantage. I'm going to have to try some really sneaky tactics, maybe getting an upgrade TLO isn't familiar with, perhaps maybe even luckily creepjacking him. I like, I like getting an upgrade, maybe Tila doesn't know. It's like maybe changing the, the game itself, the code in the game to, to beat him. I do work at Frost Giant. All right, so we got a drop here. Okay, so they got like a, almost like a headbutt. Boom, stun. Looks like they can't shoot during that. Now, there is a chicken here. This, they mentioned this in the actual reveal of the game. So... It looks like there is some type of a creep. Plus 50 of something. I don't know what that is. I don't know if the units can level up or what. There's also a little purple purple thingy here. So I don't know if that would be a resource boost or, or something like what they have in League of Legends where, like, you kill the Baron or, or the Dragon or whatever. Siege tank. Oh, look, it's got little feet. His feet actually have little feet on him. Medic attack or is that a heal? Note that some of these units, they have an animation where they fire. Other ones, it's it's like a projectile that has to connect. Kind of like a Stalker or Dragoon shoots, it has to connect to the target. But, you know, when a Marine shoots, it, the damage is just automatically dealt. What was that? Go back. Oh, that's the shot from the, the tank thing. I like the, the control you can have with the dropship. Hopefully dealing with finishing flow against Kevin here. I'll attack again from the right side through the light trees, but this time we'll bring in a larger force from the left side as well. And um, I think I'll be able to out micro him here. Um, he has a more static mech Oh, he can't army, get believe, through the trees, though. I you know, oh, what trees, chat? So the trees are just... I, I like this a lot. This makes me really interested with all the trees. Are they all destructible? Uh, all the tech shots get in there and uh, have a pretty smooth path of tech here. Oh, this looks like a curse for our boy Monk. What is this thing? Is that, is it just kind of like a science vessel? Looks like it's got mana unless that shields. Alright, go back to the beginning here. So if... 
just looking at the terrain, I mean, the the, the terrain looks to me like I, I mean, I, I'm I'm thinking StarCraft uh, one or two when I see this. We've got these big ramps. We've got it looks like I guess the map looks a little bit boxier, but there's nothing that would necessitate uh, not not boxier. What am I saying? It, it does look like there's a lot of tight corridors on this map. As far as the the layout of the ground and the terrain, I feel like yeah, you could definitely play a StarCraft game on here. You guys, I see chat is saying, I, I'm thinking Warcraft 3. I think definitely when you see grass and trees, I mean, you could, mo I mean, again, this is just a map, right? I'm sure there's going to be different maps with different tile sets, but certainly I, I could see where you're coming from thinking that. It does look like there's, you know, you can hide in these, these bushes here and fire out from there. This is exciting. It's definitely a Blizzard RTS. I wish I could see the other races. I'd be very curious to see you know, what units are going to be used. What's going to be inspired this is from? Obviously, played RTS you know, my like entire life. So StarCraft, a real um, for me to be one of the first one. StarCraft two, Star WarCraft three. What's going to be really new? Really stoked about this match against Kevin. I think I'm going to do some light harass in the early game and then just try to overwhelm him with a massive amount. Is this, of is this the actual start of the game here? Hold on. How many workers do you start with? Really stoked about this. A real privilege. Hi guys, this is TLO. So I can't tell if we're like Obviously a minute into the game or if this is like right where it starts, but it looks like you get about eight workers, one something of the like first that, nine workers. Really stoked about this match against Kevin. I think I'm going to do some light harass in the early game and then just try to overwhelm him with a massive amount of macro. Bottom right, one minute 30 in the game. Okay, so that was a minute 30 in. Okay. I do hope they don't do what they did in StarCraft 2 where you have like a lot of workers at the start. I think especially when you're talking about getting new people into a game, I think it's actually okay to give them like a few minutes to sort of process the game for beginners. Scout has 120 HP. Interesting. Let's see. Do we see the HP on the other units? The dog gets repaired? Am I seeing this right? Hi, my name is Kevin Monkdong, and I work on gameplay and balance on Stormgate. Today, I'll be trying a fast expansion build, and then I'll try to tech to higher tier units to defend whatever TLO throws out. I do like the fact that it's it's a it does have a fast feel, although it doesn't feel as fast as StarCraft Two. When people say Warcraft Three damage, I almost feel like it's a little bit less. I would encourage those people that think it's Warcraft Three level damage to go back and and. And look at Warcraft 3 game. I think it's a little, I think it's like 20 30 percent less damage in Warcraft 3, uh, or 20 30 percent more damage. However, uh, things die a little bit faster than Warcraft 3. Warcraft 3 things are a little bit tankier, things seem to be moving a little bit quicker in this. Ah, uh, he did yeah, this a lot is more of damage for damage sure. There, yeah, so I'm at a pretty bad economic disadvantage. I'm gonna have to try some really sneaky tactics, maybe getting an upgrade okay. TLO isn't familiar with. Perhaps, maybe even luckily creepjacking him. Interesting to see that they're kind of sticking with the um, drop ship shuttle drop slash kind of warp prism drop. What happened to these workers? Looks like there's like a, a something spell cast on the uh, workers. I'll attack here. What happens down here at the bottom? Oh, maybe it's like a militia function, like you have in um, Warcraft 3, maybe? <laughs> GG, Monk. So obviously, uh, I, I do have a bias. Uh, my mother works at Frost Giant. Beyond that, all of my friends that worked at Blizzard now work at Frost Giant. So I obviously I want them to succeed and I want the game to do well. But beyond that, I am one of the people that has benefited greatly from RTS, from uh, eSports. Uh, and so I would love to see this game do well. I do have my biases, but I do like what I see. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I'm very excited. I, I do need to get my hands on the game before I really have 
I guess, a feel for it. Uh, what does my, my mother do? My mother uh, used to work for my brother, then got hired at Blizzard, was there for many years, uh, managing influencers, like streamers, uh, casters, stuff like that, uh, and then left Blizzard and is now at this company. Not a big fan of the art style, but you do recognize this early pre-alpha. Yeah, that's an important point uh, to make here. This isn't done yet. And I would imagine that even after the game's released, they're going to be doing some uh, upgrades. Uh, keep in mind, you know, I think some of it looking uh, a little basic. I've seen complaints about that. I would imagine they're going to be selling skins. So maybe, like, like let's take this building right here. And I don't know if they're going to do this for the building or not. Or, or, like, the dog. Where was the dog that was there earlier? Maybe you can buy a skin. There's the dog. Maybe you buy a skin that makes it look different. That's a factor as well. It is going to be free to play. I do like that this looks like a game that, you know, you do not need to have like an RTX 3090 to play it. I think it's going to give a lot of people access uh, to it. Uh, yeah. And I mean, I like the color palette as well. Definitely a massive improvement from the StarCraft II color palette, which I didn't even really notice was as bad until I started going back and watching like Warcraft 3 or even StarCraft 1. You know, there's a period in my career where I basically just did StarCraft II Hi, for like Kevin almost a decade exclusively. Free to play is concerning. No, I think that's a good thing, Super Nothing. You want to get as many people in as possible. And then what you can do with free to play is you put microtransactions in the game. If people want to spend a lot, they do. If not, they don't. But it at least lets people try and get hooked. What do I think the magma patches do? I don't know. We, we saw. I'll, I'll try to pause the screen when we go over it here. What do I think of the movement speed? I mean, I think it looks pretty good. It looks pretty fast. Not not too fast like StarCraft 2. StarCraft 2, my big issue with it, and I've had like a lot of time to kind of think about this, uh, especially when I went back and casted StarCraft 1, is things kind of pick up too quickly. Um, things bunch together too much. Uh, the pacing seems good. Obviously, they could change the pacing to be faster or slower. You know, right now, it looks like the engine that they've built on it, things move very well. Things are not completely bunched together. The biggest issue you have whenever you make an RTS, and the reason why a lot of RTSs just aren't that good is because the engines aren't good enough to allow hundreds of objects to move around, bump into each other, uh, and, and, and uh, come out clean. Like, Age of Empires, I actually really like as a game, but, like, you see, that like it's like little sprites that stack on top of each other. Uh, you want to have that kind of space, and even StarCraft II, things kind of they're, are kind of slippery and rub on each other a little bit. What's your opinion on the Marines' paths? Looks a bit clunky, like each go in a different direction when they are kiting. Let's take a look. Let's go back. Are they... I don't feel like they do. It seems like they do sort of uh, gently push each other out of the way. I don't know. The pathing seems pretty pretty clean to me. So this is, at least for the keyboard setup, it's all going to be on the left-hand side of the keyboard, everything you'd need. We're what is the biggest talk. thing I do not want to see from this game? Okay, that's a good question. Well, I, you know, for me, personally, I, I want it to be competitive. I want there to be a lot of kind of crazy ideas and things that can happen. Uh, that means that you need to be able to die to rushes, but you also want to be able to have long games. I mean, there's a lot of things I want. I guess it's hard for me to say the things that the, the, the absolute thing I don't want to have happen. But I mean, for me, as long as it's competitive, as long as they have you know a ladder and are, and are actively trying to stop people from cheating, it's going to be a game I can pour myself into uh, and probably have a lot of fun casting, um, you know, here in Korea and around the world. Is there excitement in the Korean scene for a new Blizzard style RTS? There certainly is. I think some Koreans are skeptical. Um, the big challenge is for Korea. I think it's going to come down to if there's tournaments with money. I think pro gamers will go where the money is. If there's tournaments that they can compete in um, and debut their skills in, I think they'll be playing in it. That is going to probably be the big, big factor. So if stream numbers are good, which I would imagine they'll probably be pretty good, especially for when a game comes out. But if they can stay pretty consistent, you'll have pros that want to stream. You'll have esports orgs that want to put on tournaments. Do you think StarCraft 2 pros will would rather pick this up or go back to Brood War? Um, I go back to my answer earlier. I think if there's, I think certainly StarCraft 2 pros are going to be more inclined to do this than Brood War. The one game I'm not totally sure about is going to be 
StarCraft 1 seems to be so healthy in Korea. I don't know if you could ever, like, this would ever trump that. But, you know, if there's a, a lot of money and a big prize pool, I don't see why you wouldn't have, like, Flash and Bisu and Jadong and those guys try it out. Is the thought of learning to cast a brand new game daunting? Not not for me, no. I kind of like it, man. You know, it, it, it's it's good for my brain. It's good to challenge me. You know, one, one of the funnest periods of my life was probably the first year of GSL because we I was like Dan and me trying to figure out what they're going to do, trying to see if we can know as much as the pros. And then there's these moments where we get to learn along with the viewers or even maybe the opponent that's going to experience the strategy for the first time. So uh, I'm definitely excited. Is there anything uh, you can tell us about a potential esports scene? Well, I, I do know that uh, a lot of the esports orgs have an interest in doing it. But we're, we're kind of not there yet. I think we'll have to have, you know, the betas come out. People start playing it. Hype starts to build up. Um, we need to see if we can get big sponsors to basically fund uh, the production of events. Sponge asks, what do you think of Age of Empires? Sorry, what do you think Age of Empires did wrong um, that Stormgate could avoid to be successful? Okay, so number one, you need to have a ladder because that's what turned me off. You need to have people like me, and look, I mean, you know, I, I'm no superstar in StarCraft, but I, I do like to compete. I did go to tournaments growing up. Um, I do like laddering, as you guys noticed. I, I tend to just basically ladder all day versus uh, try to find specific opponents and, and spar with them. People like me, we need to have a place where we can be ranked and, and try to constantly improve. I like seeing exactly where I'm at. I like watching myself develop and, and grow, so I think a ladder is essential. I think you need to have a couple big I events and and, um, and kind of debut that so that you get kind of the esports uh, excitement around the game. I think that was very successfully done in Korea and abroad. Uh, and you're certainly going to have a lot of RTS players who are going to be interested in doing that. And one thing that I think H did wrong, but I don't think you can change it. It's, it's very grindy. It's like the early game is really fun, but it's really hard to finish people off. I think that StarCraft um, 1 and 2 probably have the best. WarCraft 3 is pretty good too, but y you can end a game. That's like really important to do. Once you've won, usually you, you can kind of navigate it to a closer, whereas Age of Empires, it was so grindy. That being said, I think Age of Empires early game, Age 4, uh, Age 2, it's a, it's so, in some ways, it's like the best RTS, man. Like the early game and you, know, you get like, you know, 100 workers in that. I, I really like the macro component. But yeah, um, that, that was probably my complaints with Age. I guess lastly, I think you should be embedding tournaments, streams, all that in the game client. You want to have, you know, as many eyeballs on your game as possible. Do you think team leagues are important for esports to grow? That's a very good question, actually. Uh, when it comes to Korea, uh, I think the team leagues at a period in time performed extremely well um, in what a lot of people would call the golden era of, of StarCraft 1. This is all before StarCraft 2. Uh, the issue with team games, first of all, you have to understand, early StarCraft 1, Team houses exist partially because you needed to basically recreate a PC cafe full of people to play because the internet was not as fast as it was now, right? So everybody lived together. They would train together. Uh, now that's not, A, that's not appealing for most pros. Most people, you know, my age or younger are not going to live in an apartment with 15 other guys. Not happening. So that's A. B, uh, everybody streams now. So that's a source of income. So financially, you know, these guys can, you know, all, all these pros that you watch in um, GSL, for instance, if you look, they're in their, you know, apartments in Seoul. And so, you know, people are just um, playing games there. So a lot of more pros may be free agents. Team leagues can be fun uh, for sure. And I think there's good stuff you can do with it. I don't know if it's going to be essential. I think what's more important is you just have enough tournaments um and, and also not an oversaturation of tournaments, but enough where, where there's the kind of the hype there. Do you think Frost Giant will be happy to sit back and let an esports scene develop organically? Trying to force esports scenes seems to have a really bad track record. Uh, that's a good question. There are a series of games that have organically had esports scenes. And because they were organically esports scenes, it was pretty easy 
uh, to to move in and professionalize them and, and, and grow them and make them big. That's like StarCraft, Counter-Strike, um, Smash Brothers. All those games sort of have that. Uh, and you have some companies like Nintendo that basically act like their esports scenes don't exist. If they wanted to, they could blow that up and make it massive. Not that Smash isn't big already. StarCraft, organically, they got it on TV out here in Korea. But those games are very safe models, right? And so I would put this RTS in that category. I mean, you can let you can let stuff grow organically, but it's probably good to have some kind of a, a governing body that's going to make sure you don't have tournaments totally overlapping with each other. I think that they should be somewhat hands-off, but they should definitely foster growth. Uh, what do I think about Frost Giant focusing on the 3v3 game mode as well as one versus one? I think that's good because uh, if you don't have a team play mode, it kind of drives people away. That's been proven. People like playing team games. And you can put that adjacent to the one versus one part of the game as well. Will I play the Protoss race in Stormgate? I, I think I'll try to. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play what's fun. I will probably try to get good with all three of them as well at the start. What are your thoughts on pre-game decisions, e.g. ability to swap out units you can build in different matches? Like, imagine if in SC2 if you had to choose before the game to either have Hellions or Vultures. Don't know. All of these ideas are interesting, but you have to sit down and play the game and kind of see how it feels before you can really talk. Guys, be sure to go on Steam and put the game in your wish list. Thank everybody for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it around. Uh, go to tastelessthreads.com. That's where my merch is. You can buy like, this cool Gosu shirt that I have on here. Got a bunch of other stuff I'm very proud of.